Yeah, so finally we are at the last lecture and this is going to be firstly a little bit on uh, the Dirichlet Green's function uh, for the Laplace and Poisson equations. And then we will go to the method of images in the last bit of the lecture. So remember that when we did, when we were speaking in the last, uh, last lecture, what we, we saw that, you know, the uh, solution to the, I mean, so the Green's function that we had obtained was not really very useful in the sense that uh, we what what we find found was that uh, the expression that we found was fine, but uh, it was a, a valid uh, valid equation expression obtained by any solution of the uh, M Laplace equation, but it was not a I mean constructive. Uh, expression that is we cannot use it to solve for phi in terms of boundary data uh, because uh, so uh, so what 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 happens so so you know the point being that the boundary value for phi and for the I mean normal derivative phi of phi cannot be specified independently right so only one of this actually determines what the solution to the problem is. So you cannot actually give me something which is uh, more than that independent. Uh, these, these two sets can be independent. So we have to find a way to circumvent that, that problem. Uh, so in view of this overdetermined uh, property. So we will finally ask how the Dirichlet problem for the Laplace uh, and the Poisson equation can be solved by using Green's functions in a domain uh, with boundaries. So that is what we want going to be doing today. And this is what is going to be called. We're going to be doing it by constructing what is called a Dirichlet Green's function. Okay. So let's uh, let's do that. And to that let, to do that, let's share screen first. And... Okay. So the Dirichlet Green's uh, function for the Laplace and Poisson equation. So, so we are going to define this as the following G of xy is going to be defined as Gn of xy plus um, H of xy. So this a of x y is finite for all. So this is you know for so on on okay. So a of x y is going to be finite for all x belonging uh, to this uh, this this particular domain domain omega, including x equal to y. And it also will be sat, it will also be assumed to satisfy Laplace equations throughout omega. Okay. Now for G to be this Dirichlet Green's function, the boundary value of G has to be chosen to cancel that of the fundamental solution. So that um, Okay, let's, let's, let's sort of write these things down uh, because otherwise it might get a little problematic. So age of x, y is what is uh, finite for all x in, uh, in, in omega, including x equal to y and satisfies Laplace equation throughout. Now, for G to be the Laplace Green's function, I mean, not Laplace Green's function, sorry, I mean, Dirichlet Green's function, the boundary value of G has to be chosen such that it, it cancels that of the fundamental solution Gn. 
So G of uh, del omega has to be equal to zero and G also satisfies that classification. Okay, uh, for it's not equal. Now let's suppose that G exists, and if so, uh, and given a G, we can use it to solve Poisson equation on 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 uh, I mean omega with a, with the Dirichlet boundary condition for phi. Okay, so let's let's do this. So del squared of phi is equal to minus f on omega with phi is delta phi is g. So now phi of y is equal to integral of del omega phi um, n dot red. Now it's g minus h minus g minus h n n dot del phi ds minus the usual term omega f of x now g minus h again here db okay now let's put um, psi equal to h in second green side entity Remember what the second Green's identity was. Uh, the second Green's identity was uh, this one here. Okay. So let's let's put psi equal to h out there. So that gives you the following equation. It gives you. Del omega of phi n red h minus h n red phi ds is equal to integral f h t d. Okay. So now we can put this back. I can put this back here. And then what you get is the following. Phi of y is integral to omega phi of x n to graph g. That's why. Right minus g that's why n dot graph phi x this whole thing ds minus omega f of x g of x y t v the vector signs all over the place which I've missed out but uh, I'm sure you get the gist of it now. Now, finally, we have we since we choose uh, H to ensure, uh, so so you you choose H to ensure that G on del omega is equal to zero and. Uh, using the boundary condition phi at del omega is equal to small g. Uh, once you do that, then what you get 
is that your um, you know this term is going to go away and you know, what is going to happen is that uh, this phi at this place is going to be equal to g so you can put this all back together so then that you mean so what we're going to get is phi of y is equal to integral del omega of g of x and of del g xy ts minus integral omega f of x g of xy db. Uh, solution uh, throughout omega is given purely in terms of the known uh, boundary condition and the Green's function. So um, what you can do, so this was the way of trying to solve the I mean, Dirichlet problem. Solution to the Norman problem is similar and uh, solution to Neumann is similar. So what you do is now you have n dot rare phi and del omega is equal to g. And we seek the harmonic function to make uh, and seek harmonic function to make let's call that harmonic function h prime to make uh, n dot rare g at del omega equal to zero. Then what, what ends up happening is phi of y again becomes minus integral del omega g of x into g of x y ds minus integral omega f of x g of x y db. So that's, that's how you're gonna solve the other problem. So this is, uh, if you wish, uh, what you have to do in order to solve uh, the problem. And uh, so this is the way you, you, you understand how to, you know, get rid of the, I mean, over in uh, uh, the initial uh, thing that we did last time around. So this is how we can um, solve the uh, Dirichlet problem for the Laplace and the Poisson equation using Green's function, uh, Green's function techniques now in a domain with boundaries. Okay. So that was that. And finally, um, in the end of the course, we are going to learn about the method of method of images. So finally, now we want to look at the method of images. So what happens is that for domains with sufficient amount of symmetry, sometimes we can use our you know, elegant method called the method of uh, images, also called the reflection method, to construct the required Green's function. This method can be used for uh, for for Green's functions for uh, the forced heat wave. I mean, forced heat and the wave equations as well uh, for the homogeneous equations. I mean, as well as for as well as for, uh, so let me rephrase again. This method can also be used uh, to find the Green's function for the forced heat and the wave equations, as well as for homogeneous equations. The key idea is to match the boundary conditions by placing an extended domain beyond the region of interest and by placing a mirror or image source or uh, forcing term in the un, I mean, un, unphysical region. 
So we will we will actually uh, we'll actually sort of uh, I mean just limit ourselves to uh, you know one example here, and uh, we will we will go down. So the example that we have in mind is the Green's function for. Green's function for the Laplace equation on half space. Okay. So this is what we want to do today. Um, do at the end right now. So we'll start off by looking at uh, uh, domain omega um, in three dimensions, let's call x, y, z. So they are in R3, subject to the uh, thing that z has to be greater than or equal to zero. And now we suppose uh, that phi, uh, phi of uh, phi, which is a map from omega to R, solves uh, the Laplace equation, del squared phi equal to zero inside omega subject to the boundary conditions, phi of x, y, zero is equal to h of x, y, and also limit of mod x goes to infinity, phi is equal to zero. So things fall off sufficiently fast. Before we use the formula that we have just uh, derived, for our Green's function, um, we must uh, construct the Green's function that also vanishes on, on this uh, del del uh, So as well as vanishing on the xy plane, we interpret the boundary condition on the asymptotic value of phi in a natural way by requiring that the Green's function also vanishes as we take x out to infinity, okay? We will set, uh, so yeah, so, So let's just write this down. Okay. So Green's function needs to vanish on del omega and g goes to zero as x goes to infinity as well. So we are, we are now going to use x as x, y, z, and y as also, at, let's call this x naught plus, x naught plus, which is x naught, y naught, z naught, where z naught is greater than zero, okay? So the free space Green's function, g3, x, x naught plus is one over four pi, 
one by x minus x not plus. Okay, what do you use with this? You're in three dimensions. This satisfies all the boundary conditions except this satisfies all boundary conditions except the following and G3 at x x naught plus z equal to zero is equal to minus, this is minus one over four, this is x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared plus z minus z naught squared, the whole root. This is clearly not equal to zero, okay? And the homogeneous, I mean, homogeneous, homogeneous boundary condition of G is equal to zero and z equal to zero also does not hold for G3. Okay, so we need to add some function now to cancel this non-zero uh, I mean this this uh, so we need to add some function to cancel this non-zero boundary value of G3. This should supply this should satisfy Laplace's equations throughout omega. Okay. So now let us suppose we have some x naught minus, which is x naught, y naught, and minus z naught, such that so. So x naught minus does not belong in, I mean, omega. So x naught minus does not belong in omega. So the Green's function, so the Green's function g of x x naught minus is regular everywhere. Regular everywhere in omega. So, and it obeys the Laplace equation in the upper half plane. Also, G3 of x x naught minus at z equal to zero is equal to g3 of x x naught sorry x naught plus at z equal to zero. So the uh, Dirichlet Green's function that we seek is g of x naught, sorry, x, x naught is equal to, is can be given as g3 of x, x naught plus minus g3 of x, x naught minus. This is going to be given as minus one over four pi into one over x minus x naught plus more of this minus one over x minus x minus more of that. This obeys limit of mod of x goes to infinity of g x x naught is equal to zero, as well as g of x x naught and z equal to zero is equal to zero, okay? The intuition behind this is as follows. So the Green's function, um, G3, so, so yeah, so the Green's function G3 obeyed del squared of G3 uh, x, x naught plus, is equal to minus del three of x minus x naught plus. This is uh, 
phi of x receiving a, I mean, contribution from a point source uh, of unit strength, which is placed at x equal to x naught. Plus, if we were to solve the problem on R3, G3 is x naught, G3 of x, x naught minus will represent a similar, I mean, similar contribution to phi x from a point source of magnitude, equal magnitude, but of opposite signs placed at a mirror location x, x minus. So this is, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, you know, the game that you guys do. And this is what, what we are playing, right? So the, I mean, uh, combined effect of these sources cancel, I mean, along the z equal to z, z, z zero plane. So that, that gives you, so that makes that in that case, x minus x naught plus modulus of this is equal to x minus x naught minus. That is true for this, this particular plane, right? So that, that, is, that is that. And so now we are free to apply the formula that, that we have obtained earlier, this earlier formula uh, that we got. And we, we, we can uh, do this. So there is no I mean, contribution from, uh, from the far field since phi goes to zero asymptotically. The outward normal to the domain at z equal to zero points in the negative uh, z axis. And hence all the comes from the lower boundary. So let's write that down. So um, n dot grad g z equal to zero is minus dg dz and z equal to zero, which is one over four pi into z minus z, z plus z naught by x minus x naught minus cube minus z minus z naught by x minus x plus cube. This at z equal to zero, which is z naught by to pi into x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared plus z naught squared all to the minus three halves. So phi, if you wish at x naught, y naught, z naught is equal to z naught over two pi times the integral over R2 of h of x, y by x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared plus z naught squared all to the three halves. This is over dx and dy. So this is the solution to the Dirichlet problem of I mean, uh, of the Laplace equation on the half plane. So what we did is we used the method of I mean, images to I mean, construct it. The, the instructive thing here is that you need to somehow impose the boundary conditions in the proper way. So when you have, when you have something that, it, that you know, when you have domains of sufficient <laughs> symmetry, in that case, this is something that you can do. Okay, so um, so the method of images can also be applied to some uh, more complicated domains. For example, you can think of uh, uh, so 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 this is something that you guys have seen seen before, but we are not going to ex explicitly do this here. But the idea is to make sure that you 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 do things such that you have, uh, you know, you satisfy boundary conditions in a certain way. All right, you can also use the method images for the heat equation and for inhomogeneous problems. 
But I think we have actually gone quite a little, I mean, quite a way in this course, and I shall not be doing any of those there. But if any of you have, uh, you know, if you are interested in looking at that and you uh, learn, want to learn more about it, you're free, you feel free to, uh, you know, drop me a line. So, uh, yep, yeah, that is it. So it seems that we have come to the end of the course. And I hope you had some fun doing it. I can understand that, you know, uh, in these very uh, difficult times, you are distressed and, you know, you might not be able to pay a lot of attention to what is going on. But also, please, you know, take the advantage of the fact that these lectures are recorded and you can listen to them whenever you want and for however long you want. And, um, you know, uh, I hope you you have learned something from the course, um, and I hope that is also reflected in your examinations. So yeah, all the best. And once life settles down, settles down to something which is a bit more like what we are used to, then I hope to see. Uh, you all back and back in, in campus. I hope that I'll have the opportunity of interacting face to face with most of you in not so distant future. So best of luck, keep safe, keep healthy and uh, fingers crossed of, uh, you know, about trying to get back um, to offline ways of teaching and speaking to each other sometime very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.